The Swiss authorities took him away from his mother, put him in a home, and locked him away. At age six, Walter Emmesberger was placed in foster care with a parish couple who abused him. The priest pulled my ears and my hair a lot and beat me. He would lock me in the basement or in the broom closet. Emmesberger is still traumatized by his experiences. To this day, he struggles to set foot in a church. The 64-year-old set up a small museum in the basement of the community center of his village of Fair Altdorf, which makes tangible how the Swiss state condemned him. Around 60,000 people in Switzerland were submitted to so-called administrative care by the cantonal authorities because they were judged to be socially different. The practice continued until 1981. People, including his mother, were put in prisons like this one. Emmesberger was born here in 1957. I suspect that my mother was administratively cared for because she was expecting an illegitimate child. And that's what they did at the time. They put such mothers away. They didn't fit into Swiss society. People deemed as being work shy, drinkers, or of having loose morals were taken to prison without trial to foster families or to a psychiatric ward. There, they were to be re-educated by a system that had stripped them of their rights and excluded them from society. Historians like Urs German confirmed that these people were not criminals. German conducted research for the Swiss government as part of an independent commission of inquiry. In the case of those receiving administrative care, it was usually not a matter of criminal offenses, but simply a way of life that did not conform to social norms. Stories like Walter Emmesberger's have cast a shadow over Swiss history. There are around 650 prisons and other institutions in Switzerland in which children and young adults were imprisoned, exploited, and in many cases severely mistreated. Emmis Berger was locked up for hours on end at his foster parents' house. He was forced to clean and work in the garden and fields. He didn't accompany us to the house as he suffered a panic attack when he tried to visit a few years ago. That was so strange. I hid in a bush like an animal. I really felt that this was the end. When he was 11, the parish couple took him to the psychiatric clinic in Münsterlingen. There, the boy's plight worsened. Near the idyllic Lake Constance, the hospital director tested psychiatric medication on him in the 1960s and 70s. All I know is that I felt a lot of nausea, just generally bad and lousy. And every now and again, I'd also have something like a seizure. The boy does not seem to tolerate tofranil well, and we believe that the unpleasant symptoms he is showing are side effects of this medication. It makes my skin crawl, and I ask myself why they did that. Emmesberger is fighting to have what happened to him and others forced into administrative care publicly recognized. He's received 25,000 francs from a Swiss fund. But the canton of Thurgau, which is jointly responsible, stated that there will be no compensation. The statement acknowledged the drug trials, but said that due to a lack of further studies, the extent of the damage can't be determined. Walter Emmesberger finds these stalling tactics unbearable. Tens of thousands of people have been disenfranchised by the Swiss state, he said, and their suffering must not be forgotten. My hope is that something like this never happens again, and also that this whole dark chapter of Switzerland's past goes into the history books.